chair of the Senate Labor, Commerce, and Consumer Protection Committee. And we're here today to talk about workers' compensation and the retro program and a bill that I have introduced, Senate Bill 6035, which will have a public hearing tomorrow in the Senate Labor, Commerce, and Consumer Protection Committee at 1.30 p.m. Now, I believe that everyone here in the legislature, as well as in the public, is very concerned about the issue of workplace safety and reducing um, the job injuries. But we're also concerned about the state of our economy and our budget challenges. And more than ever, small businesses and the public must know that their money is being well spent. As many of you know, a coding error was discovered by the Department of Labor and Industries last week. And uh, this was found during a study that was being performed as a result of a budget proviso directing labor and industries to conduct an outside audit of the state's retro program. And this, unfortunately, as it turns out, was one of the was the first independent review of the retro program in at least a decade. Also unfortunate is the situation that this coding error dated back to 1994 and resulted in a very large overpayment of retro refunds that have cost the workers' compensation fund and we're trying to find out the exact number, but likely 100 to 150 million dollars over this time period. It's very possible and very troubling that this overpayment resulted in an increase in workers' comp premiums for employers in the retro program. Now this is the first of two recent events, the second of two recent events that have brought new attention to the retro program. The second, rather the first, is the Attorney General's allegations that the Building Industry Association of Washington used retro refunds to violate campaign fundraising laws, which was based on a report from the Public Disclosure Commission. And we're still waiting to see what happens with that. But these events and the magnitude of their consequences for employers and for the public highlight the fact that there has been no real transparency and oversight or really any disclosure requirements for way too long. Retro is not going to go away. I think everybody believes it's been an outstanding program. They were created back in the 1980s to improve workplace safety and we want to have that continue. They have an important place in our workers' compensation and safety picture. They're important, as I said, but I believe they can benefit from the provisions of Senate Bill 6035. So our measure aims to do two things. First, to raise the public's understanding and confidence in retro programs by increasing transparency and accountability. As such, the bill requires labor and industries to conduct a review of its retro programs each year for five years. The bill also requires the department to apply clearer guidelines to retro groups, ensuring that they consist of substantially similar programs. Secondly, the bill would put more money into the hands of our state's small businesses. Currently, the retro program refunds the workers' compensation premiums to retro groups who, in a way, outperform non-retro groups in worker safety or non-retro employers for worker safety purposes. But the situation, which I find troubling, is that these refunds are distributed back to the work back to the retro group rather than the individual employers who have had low incidence of worker compensation claims. And this bill would make a change in that. It would require that retro groups return most of the retro refund to the employer members, small businesses in most cases, of the retro organization within 90 days after 
receipt of the refunds. Now, I'd really like to have it noted, though, that the retro groups can keep a portion of the retro refunds under the provisions of this bill to cover administrative costs, the cost involved with establishing safety programs, managing claims, and so forth. That's reasonable, and we certainly do not want to have any disincentive for retro programs to continue their <coughs> outstanding uh, work. However, what we do believe is that it's fair that the employer members of the retro groups understand that there have been refunds made as a result of their increasing their workplace safety and keeping the claims down. So again, transparency, accountability, making sure employer members know about the refunds. And there is nothing in this bill whatsoever to keep any employer member from entering into a contract to allow for an even larger amount to go back to the retro group. And I really think that we're facing a, a, just a terribly difficult challenge, as we all know, here with our budget situation. But more importantly, for the workers in our state and for our businesses in the state, especially small businesses. So we're trying to make an improvement here with accountability and transparency.